Yes, that's right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back. It's the return of the VIB news attack after a little hiatus. Why? Because there wasn't much happening and I was tired, God damn it. We're broadcasting live, or not so live, or semi-live from the Townhouse Bar and Lounge in exciting downtown Vallejo. Hey, let's talk with one of the locals and see what's shaking. Hey, you wouldn't have a belt of booze around here, would you? As a matter of fact, yes, but uh, moving right along, this is a joint production of the Vallejo Independent Bulletin at VIBVallejo.com and OzCat Radio at 89.5 FM. Tonight we are reporting on the Vallejo City Council meeting for July 8th, 2014. And before we proceed, a Latin lesson. It's very important to know your Latin, Anne. Oh, a Latin lesson, uh-oh. Yes, bueno. because we're discussing politics, you have to look at the root. I have to look at the root cause? The root, yes. Poly. Poly. Many. Many. Ticks. Uh-huh. Small blood-sucking creatures. <laughs> Okie dokie, smoky. I'm following that. You got it. Bueno. A little Latin. <laughs> Tonight was an exciting night at the council meeting. Actually, it wasn't that. Well, some parts were exciting. We had a bunch of new hires for the city. Once again, we seem to be rebuilding ourselves. Right. The good news, we have 16 new hires. So one for finance, three for legal, and 12, count them, for the police department. Uh, two in communications, three trainees, and seven police officers. And three of those officers have served in the Middle East. So we've gotten them from the Marines, from the Coast Guard and from the Air Force Reserve. Um, by the end of August, we are supposed to be up to 105 police officers, and by the end of December, up to 110, which was the goal the city had set out. So moving right along, a, a beaming Chief Crines with his new hires. Right, Chief Crines, he is a stand-up comic and a police chief, and um, I'm going to miss him when he uh, moves along, but we still have him for now, and um, he's always a charmer when he's in front of the council. Of course, he only deals with the hiring end, and uh, underlying all this good news of having the new safety staff is how are we paying for them, and um, right. unfortunately, that's going to yes. come back to us in a well, number we, of years. Well, we delved in, we continuously delve into the quandary of Measure B funds being spent, which are one-time monies for recurring costs. Uh, J.D. Miller, local CPA and gadfly, brought that up later in the evening, asking a question about, uh, you know, how are we again budgeting to pay for things we can't afford? Right, yeah. So this this fiscal year that starts this month uh, for 2014-2015, we have... Um, uh, we have a golden period where the balance, the budget is balanced for one year, but then as of the next fiscal year, we already go into debt. So yes. we're, something's going to need to change. From the gleam and gloss of fiscal survivorship down into the muck, we were talking <laughs> about dredging muck as well, this uh, council meeting. Right, a dredging contact, contract had a little bit of controversy. Um, the bidder, the contract person who was chosen, apparently is non-union, and so that raised a couple of eyebrows. Um, but the, it turns out, at the end of the day, the contractor that had been chosen has done work for the city before. So um, uh, it, at the end of the day, there was really no formal reason to bar them. They've done good work for us. They were the lowest bidder, and so we moved on from there. Absolutely. In other news, Hiddenbrook is finally getting a park. Oh, yes. well, you know, now see, you were paying attention to that and I wasn't. Um, that's why you need a couple sets of eyes on these things. That one slipped by me. So um, some of the things that were more in the action part of the agenda and maybe um, brought a few more people up to the dice. There's going to be a big waterfront festival coming up in Vallejo and there was a proclamation on it. And you, in fact, I, I are a part there. of the team now. Yes, I'm, I'm part of the team, which... Um, is is causing much shock and awe because the <laughs> other uh, part of the team is, is John Riley. Right. So there's the, a team the, of like at least 10 organizations getting together for this Waterfront Festival October 4th and 5th and um, bringing together bedfellows who would not normally uh, be collaborating on things but for the good of the city. And they're going to do things like whale boat races and a 5 and 10K run. There's going to be a dignitary dunk tank, which uh, should be the highlight of the festival and the chief moneymaker. A chili cook-off, art windows, parties at the Myra, par parties at the Empress. And I'm very pleased to say that the Myra Theater 
and the Cultural Center is going to be the prime beneficiary and of it's that festival. All about the leaking roof. Yeah, so maybe they'll get that much closer to fixing their roof and saving that building. Right, and uh, it's uh, it's it's quite an interesting group, as uh, some of our our listeners may or may not know. Uh, John Riley, he was the sort of king and leader of the Jumpstart clan in the recent election. And uh, we're kind of known for going at it and gouging each other a bit. But uh, we've decided to put all that aside and try to combine forces or something and uh, help get a roof on the Myra. Right. So um, I think very few people would ever have expected to see you, Mark, and uh, John Riley collaborate on anything. So... That'll be a historic moment and a historic weekend. I hope so. (laughs) And uh, aside from building things up, we talked a bit about tearing things down, some demolition issues. Right. So one of the items on tonight's agenda was to approve a bid to demolish three buildings on North Mare Island. The the biggest one that you can see when you turn onto North Mare Island from Highway 37 and then two adjacent ones. And that work is supposed to be going on in August. And then related to that, the city is finally going to start doing something about the old Badge and Pass the building. The Badge and Pass office, an eyesore, a disaster, and one of your pet peeves, Ann. That's right. Well, it's it's a blight on the west side of town. It's a blight on to the, a gateway into Mare Island and to Vallejo, full of squatters and criminal activities. And to fast forward to the bottom line, it looks like work on demolishing that might start as early as September, October. So stay tuned on that. And um, one good thing that has come about is that there are so many problems there. The city has finally decided to have uh, the security firm they use on North Mare Island to do patrols there. So that's very good news. So we had some a couple other things come up. Let me see. Oh, speaking about Mare Island and North Mare Island in particular, uh, the city really is hoping to stimulate proposals for economic development there. They're sending out a request for quotations, so basically a request for ideas. Right. It'll go out July 18th, and the replies will be due September 17th. So um, they're really hoping to generate a lot of interest in the developer community for bringing business, uh, various types of business to North Mare Island. And there's a lot of different types of business that might be vying for it, although right now kind of waiting in the wings and hovering around. Uh, there's a lot of talk about uh, putting a casino on the north end of Mare Island, and uh, for sure, Council Member Jess Melgapo, a formal, former lobbyist for the very group that is considering putting a casino there or vying for it, uh, has kind of gotten out in front, and he's doing a lot of stumping for this project, which uh, raises some questions. Right, so a casino is one of the options for North Mare Island, And all I can say is I hope that the city will continue straight ahead on generating a lot of different ideas and not just the casino idea. I think Vallejo deserves to get the broadest possible possible participation by the development community to really see what's possible there and what makes sense and not just short circuit the process. You could ask yourself a question. Do I feel lucky? (laughs) Well, do you, punk? Yeah, well, I'm not a well, casino person here. I'm not in favor <laughs> of casinos. So I probably don't feel like that's a really lucky strategy. But we'll see what the proposals are and try to keep an open mind about evaluating all of them. That's all we can do, really, is uh, is listen and uh, see what they come up with. Right. So speaking of plans the and general plan. What what's going on, the general plan is a topic that came up tonight. So, as you know, this is a massive, massive project. It's a three-year project. The price tag for all the various components, there's five big components, right. came well, to let's just, let's just backtrack a little, yeah. and, and And for some of our listeners, uh, talk about what a general plan is. Right. And it, it sort of is what it sounds like, but it is the embodiment of the overriding principles and ideas that we want to build our city around. Right. The broad and concepts. And we haven't had uh, a general plan update in 20 some odd years. Actually, uh, 30. 30 years, actually. 30 years. You're right, 30. Right. So a lot of the stuff we're doing is sort of stuck in the 80s. Right. Old, so the, the, old ideas, old planning concepts, 
um, where in the ensuing 30 years, a lot of other cities have learned from their mistakes. Uh, we're still following something written based on the mistakes in a lot of cases. Right. Vallejo's plans, in short, are a mess. So the last time a general plan update was done was 1983. It's very outdated. Of course, Mirror Island was still operating then. In the interim, we've had something like, I want to say, 25 or 26 specific plans some of which are inconsistent, some of them are contradictory, all of which are poorly archived. So the net result is that when a developer comes to the city and says, gee, I want to know if I can do such and such and such and such an area, it's really hard for the city to give them an answer. Somebody has to go spelunking in the file cabinets and digging up plans and maps to see what the zoning is and what the plans are for various areas. So. It's a major undertaking in house cleaning that's really necessary for Vallejo to have a level field for going forward. Absolutely. So it's not a hodgepodge. Uh, right. Local environmental activist Doug Darling uh, was here this evening. He's very happy to see uh, environmental awareness as one of the components of the general plan. Right. So they've done, the, there's a working group of 15 citizens working on the general plan and then you know, consultants by the Wazoo uh, working with the planning department. Um, but they finished uh, the first part of this whole process, which is called the principles. And really what that's about is sort of the vision for what they, what people want to see in the city in the future. And so um, there were four different workshops around the city. 300 people participated in them. They had online forums as well and outreach to different communities to basically generate the ideas of what do you want to see? What are the important principles for Vallejo moving forward? And um, there's a group of people who have worked very hard on this and are continuing to work. It's a, it's a big commitment. So. Uh, another big topic tonight was uh, vacant and uh, foreclosed uh, property ordinance. Right. Uh, Nimat Shakur Grantham from uh, Code Enforcement was up talking about that this evening. Right. Just a little bit, of, about one year after that ordinance was passed. It was passed in May 2013. And, and the whole idea about it was to really get a handle on who the owners were of these vacant and abandoned properties so that the city could start going after them to get them right. managed and, and it, maintained. It, it gets into a funny space where, where things are in limbo. Somebody walks away from a property. Um, it, it might still be in their name, but um, you know the bank may be close behind, but it can fall into a, a, a limbo where a notice of default has been served, and yet the bank hasn't taken possession and foreclosed on it yet so some of these properties hang out for a year year and a half two years in the meantime squatters move in right. and all the problems which unfortunately many of us are all too familiar with right so a key part of this whole property uh, the vacant and foreclosed property ordinance was to identify who the owners are so that the city can be in contact with them and thankfully the city has taken the right approach on this which is really they are looking to ensure compliance. So they're not so much looking for fines and fees as to get the properties taken care of. And um, in the, I guess in the last two years, there's really been a big reduction in dr distressed properties. And, and part of it in terms of the city has to do with this particular ordinance and program, along with things like the neighborhood law program. So, um, I think overall it's a really good program. There were some questions that Mayor Davis raised around um, should there be exemptions for properties where we know what the who the owner is, but it's not right. really in foreclosure. There, there seemed to be some real ambiguity in the ordinance. Um, yeah. Nobody seems to be able to really make head or tails out of it. It was like if, if somebody's property is empty but it's well maintained, do they have to pay the registration fee of, what, $386, I think? 368 368 Right, so the, the city attorney, Claudia Quintana, is going to come back uh, next council meeting with a little bit of clarity around that. I, I believe it's actually in the ordinance that if the owner is either rehabbing the building or is actively maintaining it, then all they have to do is register the building. They don't have to, they wouldn't be eligible for any fines. But, you know, I was trying to read the fine print and couldn't do that that quickly. Um, 
before we wrap up, if we have just a minute or two um, in the announcement sections, a couple things coming up. July 10th, there's the Senior Roundtable at the Florence Douglas Center at 2 p.m. Um, council members. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, uh, McConnell and Malgapo lead that so that seniors have a way to interact with council members without coming to council itself. Uh, July 16th, there's a free night at the Empress, and it's supposed to be a sample showing of what might be happening during the Visions of the Wild Festival, which is... Which, um, September 3 to 6. September 3rd through 6, Vision of the Wild Festival, a big um, festival that's really being hosted and sponsored by the Forest Service in honor of the 50th anniversary of the Forest something or other... <laughs> <laughs> The Wilderness, the wilderness Act. Act. I had help from a friend w whispering to me. Lifeline. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> help me. Ooh. Rumor department. Ooh, la, la, yes, la. the fly on the back of the cockroach on the wall of the Jumpstart headquarters. Ooh, yes, whispered in my some ear. Juicy news. Let's well, hear it. We'll just we'll say they're rumors, and uh, the rumors are that going forward, the Jumpstart folks are going to be pushing uh, Aaron Hannigan is going to be making a run at state senator. Jess Melgapo will be moving forward. And again, these are unconfirmed rumors, so take them with a grain of salt. But the rumor is that Jess Melgapo will be moving forward to supervisor. And in the 2016 mayoral race, the jumpstart candidates are, maybe, perhaps, if the rumors are true, possibly, either Hermie Sunger or Rosanna Verder Eliga. Okay, so my eyebrows are up to the top of my skull on yes, the last Anne. one. We'll see if those rumors are confirmed. Yes. And um, if they do right. come to pass, at least with let's, respect let's, to the Vallejo City, let's hope that certain people start doing their homework and paying attention. Let's, yes, let's be real. Hermie had a fake degree, <laughs> and we're not sure if Roz reads her council packet. No, actually, we think she doesn't read the packet, but you might have to edit that out. <laughs> <sighs> and in the words of someone you all know and love. Don't be ridiculous. And we're signing off over and out, Anne. Over and out, Mark. <laughs>